looks good. Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we hope to keep you awake for a while before the coffee break uh, with some entertaining ancient Egyptian material. And uh, so the goal today is to give a bit of an overview of what has been done uh, in uh, in the field, and we are going to zoom out from the very issue of encoding uh, hieroglyphic signs up uh, to the level of the digital corpora and then to the interchange format, the link to open data issues and uh, the data model that we use for our encoding our, uh, our corpora. Uh, so first, the encoding and complex writing system, and I'm going to talk a bit about the hieroglyphic sign list, uh, some paleographical project, the Unicode issue, and uh, what we have as far as OCR is concerned for uh, the hieroglyphic script. Um, so first, uh, it might be uh, interesting to uh, stress that we do not have a stable sign list for ancient Egyptian. Uh, this means that we have uh, several printed sign lists with a description of the sign function, uh, but uh, barely any sign is describing the shape of the sign themselves, and uh, they're all uh, kind of uh, outdated. And uh, additionally, we have a lot of uh, unpublished material, which, are no, which is now progressively made available uh, on the web. A good example is the Berlin sign list, which were, was prepared for the, the virtual book, and was planned as a supplementary to, to this dictionary, as a dictionary of spelling. It's now available online, and it's full of material about signs that are not compiled in any uh, modern sign list. Uh, you see uh, how it looks now, uh, but it's been put online. And in this, uh, in this description of signs, you have a lot of information that are not available to scholars otherwise. Uh, you also have a list compiled by uh, very famous names in Egyptology, like Ornung and Schenkel, uh, with a description of the function and of the various shapes of the sign that you find uh, in the Egyptian text, but uh, this is not included in the uh, sign list uh, used nowadays. So we are in the process of building a new sign list uh, now, uh, based on a proposal that I made with uh, Serge Rosmorduc and in collaboration with uh, the Academy in Berlin. And uh, we recently suggested in a meeting in Cambridge a UML model for uh, yeah, articulating the sign list and structuring it. Uh, and uh, more, I mean, the most crucial point maybe is the fact that when you suggest a function, or you need to reference everything uh, based on corpus data. And uh, so this is the goal of the, this ongoing project between uh, Berlin and, and Liège. And uh, we plan to make it available uh, as linked open data for uh, uh, the, the corpora and other paleographical projects. And of course, there are so many signs and so many variations in shapes uh, that at some point where, when we will reach uh, a stable uh, state of, uh, of, the, of the sign list, we want to make it collaborative in order for uh, people to be able to enlarge this sign list uh, as uh, we uh, saw a bit earlier, uh, but uh, in a different field for, for Chinese. Um, and of course, uh, you have big project in Germany like the Aku project about the Altegyptische Kurzschriften uh, in ancient Egypt. And uh, the, the goal is to analyze the evolution of the, the cursive writing system uh, over, the, uh, over the entire history of ancient Egyptian. And it's just starting, but it's for 23 years. And uh, the issue for them is that they want to document, of course, the evolution of the cursive script, but they, let's say, they do not have a proper description of the capital system uh, in, uh, to, to which they could refer. So we really need to work hands in hands in order for them to be able to refer to stable kind of, to, to, yeah, to stable hieroglyphs while they're describing the evolution of the cursive system. Um, and uh, of course, this lack uh, of uh, hieroglyphic um, assignments is problematic because uh, at the moment in Unicode, we all only have a very restricted set of hieroglyphs uh, encoded, which means that when you're implementing Unicode, you actually have access only to a bit more than 1,000 signs, whereas we know that there are uh, more than 10,000 signs uh, out there. And so, uh, despite the effort, and uh, so is there in the room, so we developed this wonderful tool for uh, encoding text in Unicode, but it is limited due to the limit the limitation of the sign list available nowadays in Unicode. And as scholars, we do not want 
plenty of signs to be added in Unicode without knowing what are their shape, what are their function. So in a way, we see the touch scientist as a preliminary step before uh, we can add uh, all of these uh, glyphs in, uh, in Unicode. And uh, another big issue with Unicode is the fact that um, you have some kind of recursivity in uh, the, the ancient Egyptian writing system, meaning that you can embed unit into unit into units, and it's not really easy to implement in open time and uh, in open type uh, fonts. So, sorry, and so uh, there are ETT discussion about the the Unicode committee in order to know um, what is the best option in all, uh, in terms of control character for positioning the hieroglyphs with respect to one another. Uh, it seems that it's going in the good direction and that they found a solution to this, this technological issue recently. Uh, but of course, uh, if you uh, if it turns out that you cannot position with control character in Unicode the, the signs with respect to one another, uh, then you need to add many more uh, signs which are combined signs in Unicode. Uh, if you can actually combine them with a few operators, then you need much less signs in Unicode. So uh, the whole process uh, depends on uh, the, the implementation or not of these uh, control characters. Um, as for OCR, a um, uh, very good proof of, of concept has, has been made by uh, Markian Nedorf uh, on handwritten transcription of uh, hieroglyphic text. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to do OCR on uh, pictures of monumental text, but when it comes to the, the full uh, edition of many texts from the same period in the same end, then uh, you, we can do a lot of progress and we still uh, really need for uh, the corpora, uh, about which I'm talking in a second, um, uh, we still need a lot of text to be, uh, to be added. So what do we have in terms of uh, corpus and digital edition? First, we have basic digital edi edition, uh, which are uh, static, so to say. So you have the text uh, transliterated and uh, the link to the pictures, some transliteration in hieroglyphs and, uh, and translation, plus uh, some uh, other um, useful um, useful tool. This is the Daryl Medina Online, publishing many ostraca from uh, this famous site of uh, ancient Egypt. And you have other projects, like the Karnak project, uh, encoding uh, all the texts from this famous temple. Uh, there are uh, several uh, thousands. And of course, because they're working there, they're directly documenting the wall with uh, I mean, very detailed uh, pictures and uh, transcribing the hieroglyphs and transliterating them. But it's uh, kind of a basic uh, online publication of the material. In a way, it's it's more handy than a book uh, because you can navigate in uh, within the data and search for a specific thing. But uh, it's not uh, really what one could call annota an annotated uh, corpus. Uh, of course, you have a lot of uh, meta information like uh, bibliographical references and uh, stuff like this. Um, as far as the proper annotated corpora are concerned, I'm going to talk about uh, the three main projects nowadays in Egyptology, namely uh, the Thesaurus uh, Linguae Egyptiae in Berlin, uh, Ramses Online developed in Liège, and the, Carnet, uh, the Carnac Cachette. Uh, developed uh, by uh, Laurent Coulon with the help of Vincent uh, at, uh, in, in Paris. Uh, so the first project is the famous uh, Thesaurus Linguae Egyptiae, and it's a publication plat platform uh, that uh, was made available um, on, uh, on the net by the Berlin Brandenburg Academy. And uh, the first um, release for general use was in October 2004, and they have the biggest corpus available nowadays for the whole uh, ancient uh, Egyptian history with 1,400,000 uh, uh, occurrences. And it, go, it ranges from the all, earliest period, old Egyptian and pyramid texts, down to the Ptolemaic times and uh, some uh, demonic texts. Uh, what you have there uh, is a lemmatized corpora with a morphological annotation uh, of the text material, allowing for a specific lexical, philological, linguistic, and uh, so on uh, research. Uh, but of course, when the project started in 2004, it was still a challenge to encode hieroglyphs. And it's uh, only uh, recently, as we will see, that the, yeah, the philosophy changed and that uh, the, the academy is now adding systematically the hieroglyphs to the transliteration, which was only in uh, Latin-like uh, alphabet before. Of course, uh, each token is linked to an entry in the lemma list, 
and the text and document are described by rich metadata. We'll come back to this issue uh, a bit later. And as I said, um, recently, uh, a new software for annotating the text has been developed by the Academy um, and uh, is uh, now used in order to for the new text uh, inputted in the database to be uh, yeah, accompanied by hieroglyphs and to enrich the older text with hieroglyphic spelling. Um, we can now turn to Ramses Online. So Ramses Online is much more limited in scope. Uh, it, it, Ramses Online comes out of the Ramses project and the goal uh, is to build a richly annotated corpus just of the late Egyptian text. So to put it uh, uh, bluntly, it's just the text from the Middle Kingdom, so this period that you have on the screen, and these texts are written uh, either in hieroglyphs or in uh, uh, the, uh, the cursive hieratic script. Uh, and the goal uh, when the, the project started was to uh, for the, the corpus to be useful both for philologists and linguists. And uh, for this, we developed uh, a Java software with text stored in XML, and uh, it's a lexicon editor in which uh, the hieroglyphic um, script is uh, uh, fully taken into to account and in which we can uh, lemmatize and uh, annotate morphologically uh, all the all the tokens uh, of uh, of the text uh, so what kind of data do we have we have the hieroglyphic spellings lemmatization and morphological annotation uh, we have information about textual criticism. I mean, these are not very precise. These are not uh, indication at the sign level. It's at the token level. Uh, but this was in order not to create too many different spelling in the database and to keep this information. Uh, just uh, in order to draw the attention of the scholar, please go and look in the text. This word is actually not complete. Um, and we, of course, uh, have a translation of uh, all the text encoded in French and in English. Uh, besides this um, editor, we have what we call the syntax editor, uh, which is, uh, so to say, theory neutral, which means that we annotate uh, blocks and units, and we define thanks to uh, what we call the uh, syntax language description. Uh, we define a syntax for analyze, analyzing text. Here, uh, it's a basic uh, syntactic analysis uh, of a sentence, uh, but this tool is also used nowadays by uh, a project led by uh, Camilla Dibiase Dyson uh, in Göttingen uh, for annotating metaphor because you can define a grammar, uh, so to say a syntax, uh, for uh, annotating a metaphor co-reference in a single text, uh, which means that with this tool we can add as many layers of annotation to a text uh, and uh, it's very handy because it's directly integrated with the data of uh, Ramses, which means that all the information about the lemma, about the, the part of speech annotation, about the morphological analysis are available in the syntax editor. And um, you can create rules allowing you to do uh, some grouping or not depending on the type of group that you want to add in a sentence. Um, so yeah, this is also used for metaphor analysis and uh, this project started in 2006 and all the people you see on the screen have been uh, collaborating uh, on uh, this project and uh, actually the number of texts nowadays uh, is uh, nearly uh, 5,000 uh, 5, and uh, we just got a, a new PhD student for uh, annotating uh, some uh, the text in the database, so we hope that uh, it will again uh, raise up in terms of uh, speed of encoding. And as you see, the token, the number of tokens is uh, a bit more than uh, 500 uh, thousands. Uh, it seems not much uh, when compared to the, even the classical languages, and it seems like nothing when compared to modern languages as a corpus. Uh, but we, of course, have to encode every single spelling by hand and to analyze everything. We have no, no parser, no tiger, nothing available, so that this is all inputted by hand. And um, so we can also expect the quality of the data to be quite good. And on the other hand, we uh, estimate that this uh, covers more than 90% of the erratic documentation for the for the period we want to cover. So it's pretty crude comprehensive despite the low, uh, the low figure. Um, and it's now available online. And uh, we have a responsive website based on Bootstrap. 
and we have powerful linguistic searching capabilities because this was uh, designed as a, as a linguistic corpus in the first place. So, for example, here uh, you're looking for um, yeah, uh, definite uh, relative clause with some uh, hieroglyph in it and a verb which also includes some hieroglyphs. You can combine the unit uh, as much as you wish and uh, you'll get uh, the answer. So it's quite uh, good for, um, for, for linguistic searches. Uh, it's in interaction with the user, which means that we keep on um, amending the data uh, within the database, but we have a stable ID. So it means we have legacy URL. And uh, if you want to quote the text at some point, uh, you quote it and you can get it uh, on the website uh, even three years later, if, even if the text has been completely changed, at least the text as you quoted it uh, remains as such in the database and is acceptable in, and is accessible online. Uh, finally, you can uh, also, uh, as when you're a registered user, uh, you can also comment uh, on every single sentence in order to let us know, uh, listen, there is a problem here, this is not the right hieroglyph, or your analysis uh, sucks for this passage, uh, so please amend it. And uh, finally, it's fully glossed and translated, and um, I want here to um, yeah, come back to uh, what uh, Usama said yesterday, uh, because uh, half of the MA students who register for using uh, this database are actually Egyptian MA students. Uh, and uh, it's not the, the same for the higher academic level, but for people giving us, uh, telling us like, I'm a MA or I'm a PhD or I'm a postdoc student. I mean, half of the MA students are uh, from Egypt and it means that it's actually helpful to have this kind of corpus uh, glossed and fully translated um, online. Um, the Kashat Karnak, no. Um, the goal uh, is to put online all the texts that are on the statues um, here uh, found by uh, Georges Legrand in uh, the famous uh, cachette uh, in the temple of Karnak, uh, which I was mentioning earlier in this talk. And uh, nowadays we have uh, already um, a full uh, description with all the bibliographical information available for each statue online. And, um, we, we have also online uh, the, all the pictures available for, uh, for these statues, but I use, as you see on the right hand side, you also have a lot of text on, uh, on these statues. And so the goal uh, is to uh, create a text corpus uh, which would be interoperable with other digital corpora and uh, take into account the, of course, in this case, uh, very crucial relationship between text and object. And the main focus of the project when it was, when it was launched was uh, prosopographical data because, of course, on these statues you find a lot of names, of titles, affiliations, and functions. And so you can, with all these statues, if you connect them, you can build up all family trees and relationship in the Theban region uh, of the time. And uh, Vincent uh, designed for this uh, XML editor uh, for ancient Egyptian epigraphy, which is a user-friendly interface for TI epilogue encoding in a Java application. And um, it looks uh, like this. And um, you can uh, here uh, easily uh, annotate a lot of information, especially about uh, um, anthroponyms and uh, titles and uh, function as you see on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, here, uh, you can even, once you, you've identified the, the people and their function, you can uh, encode the family relationship uh, within the interface and you have directly the text available in TEI uh, compliant format. And uh, of course, then you can uh, export uh, the text in this uh, very form. Um, now, when it comes to the alignment of parallel text, um, I have to say that, uh, as for now, we do not have in Egyptology the practice of producing critical editions, which means that when we create uh, annotated corpora, uh, like for the TLA or Ramses, if we encode a text, we encode all the witnesses of a text. Uh, but we are far from uh, putting together critical edition. And so this is really a challenge ahead and something for which we would need a tool. And I'm just going to try to explain the kind of challenge that we have uh, in this field. Unfortunately, Daniel Verning uh, and uh, Elisa Sofia Linker were unable to make it uh, today. But I want to mention uh, the Rosetta Stone online project because what they did is really 
um, some kind of a proof of concept or test of alignment of uh, a text uh, in um, of, from ancient Egypt. Uh, of course, the corpus is very specific uh, because they work on the multilingual polemic decrees where you have hieroglyphic script, demotic, and ancient Greek. Uh, of course, demotic and ancient uh, and, uh, and hieroglyphic uh, Egyptian are the same language but for, from different period, whereas Greek is a completely different language. So the level, the natural level of alignment for such texts would be uh, the meaningful unit, unit of the sentence. It's difficult to align things uh, at, a, at another level. And uh, the, the way the website uh, is, uh, is built is very um, ergonomic because you can uh, choose, as you see on top, uh, which level of annotation you want to visualize or not uh, on the screen. Um, then uh, Nedarov uh, made an experiment for aligning automatically um, a hieroglyphic text and its transliteration based on some values that you have uh, identified for the hieroglyphic text. And uh, it works uh, very well, but usually what we would have to do is to align such text. So here I just give you uh, a small uh, page of the first sentence of a literary text uh, called the satire of the traits and you see how many witnesses and how lacunary they are and uh, we would need of course to align these texts at the level um, of, of the world uh, ideally but uh, of course we have very many uh, lacunary witnesses and for me this is a challenge even more so for other literary texts when you have different version of the same text in different stages of the language. And then uh, if you do not tell in advance to the computer, well, uh, this belongs to the same stage, please align at the world level. And because it all, all looks the same in this, in this synoptic edition, so I mean, we really uh, would need a powerful tool in order, in order to, to press, process all the data we have annotated so far. And we did not get to this point yet. Um, and now I'm giving the floor to, to Vincent for uh, the bigger picture about the, the yeah, all the metadata and uh, mo data model that we use. You know. Yeah, yeah the, the idea in the few remaining minutes uh, is to is to to give an overview of what strategy the um, uh, people dealing with this coppers uh, put in place in order to make all this project more uh, interoperable. Um, one first uh, things we we uh, um, started to work work on uh, a few years ago. We presented something at the uh, TI conference in Lyon uh, in uh, 2015, so um, two and a half year uh, ago. It's a TI epidoc um, specification um, uh, for uh, ancient Egyptian. Um, Egyptian text. Uh, it's here. I wanted to uh, change the typo. It's not a, a lapsus. Huh? It's not. There is no pain in what we are doing in, in our in our work. But it's um, so. This group of people um, uh, work together in order to define and to find in the TI which where uh, which which element could be used in order to be able to share um, all the all the data. The idea was to go back to, to the document. I don't know if it's very specific to Egyptology or it's maybe more than for classical studies, but our texts are really uh, embedded into uh, artifactual uh, things and artifacts. And for us, it's very important to keep track of the very precise location of text. It's, of course, the provenance, uh, it's from this temple or this place, this archaeological site. But we do have also important information in terms of location on the monument itself. And the, the position of a, the location of a, mon of a text on a monument is also meaningful. For instance, on, on a statue like this, for instance, you will see that maybe on the right side is mentioned this, this um, this deity and on the, the other side, another one, because it was put somewhere in the temple and just uh, reflecting the theological uh, system of, of the temple. So the idea was to, to start from really the object itself and to find a way to encapsulate all the data we need to have 
in order to fully document a text, uh, an epigraphical text. So there is, uh, and the fact is, Tihai, which is more uh, a, a toolkit than other thing, that, uh, something else, um, is um, uh, contains a lot of elements that are matching uh, the needs. So it's possible in Tihai to say, oh, there is an ideal document which is not existing anymore. Uh, but we can say, yeah, there is this concept of statue um, of ore uh, now kept in, in the museum. And it goes with the artifactual object, the, the object itself, which is really kept in a museum. And we are also able to um, model um, uh, the, the, the surfaces where the text will, uh, uh, will take place. Uh, the writing support. We are also uh, then able to uh, model to say, yes, we have this text, this bit of text here, and or so here is um, highlighted in green. Uh, and we also have this iconic or these images, these figures which are depicted on the statue. And of course, text are linked to the figures. Some text at the top are referring to, uh, for instance, uh, the god Amun, who is in the middle. So we have to say, oh, this text goes with this figure. And I think it's something very uh, important. And of course, we have the text itself that we can encode in a, in a GI way. Um, and what is what was also important for us was to be able to, 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 to make link to more um, abstract text, so, so, so to, for instance, to say this text is this kind of text or is an instance of something known elsewhere. And here it's, uh, so maybe not for statues and like that, but for papyri, for sure, we do need and we still need to have a kind of CTS system so that we can refer to, to uh, specific texts. Uh, this material is available online on the top project. Uh, we set up a page on our uh, website um, where you can already have very, it's, it's just beta version, uh, some relax ng uh, schemas uh, as well as a DTD and a maximal template which gives some example how you can use this uh, TI file. Um, when we worked on this, and of course it was a question behind um, uh, or behind for a long time, but when we really started to work on the CI uh, file, we realized how it was important to be able to um, to take into account all the kind of metadata uh, um, uh, uh, TI uh, files uh, allows to, to encode. And this is a list of all the kind of metadata uh, we should be able to implement in our file. So it, this leads me to talk now about metadata for sharing ancient, ancient Egyptian resources. Um, basically, projects are dealing with the same material, the same kind of data, and metadata. Um, that is to say, the object and the text, uh, which are written on, on them. But, uh, and Stefan showed that um, before me, uh, because of difference of methodology of research creation, of course, each project developed their own system. And it was really uh, the case also for metadata enrichment. And so if we are not pointing to the same metadata, we will not be able to compare our material. So the idea was to, to set up a project. Uh, these are uh, the kind of of metadata we have to, to deal with. So about uh, object, object type, material, um, um, preservation state types, for instance. We have to deal with text, um, text types. What are the canonical texts we could uh, refer to? Uh, the language types, we need very precise list of, of entries for all this. There are a big issue of space and, and time, how to add metadata about space location, provenance, and, and also uh, time. And of course, the way texts are uh, maybe encoded. 
there are uh, some resources about uh, for, for that currently um, uh, for for metadata. The current resources are a bit uh, are very um, different and, and not very uh, consistent. There is a MET, the Multilingual Egyptological Thesaurus, which is a, pu a print thing uh, published in 1988. Um, and there is no uh, official uh, digital version of that. And it's a bit outdated because it's uh, nearly uh, 30 years old now. Um, there is, of course, some databases uh, with metadata, the Dead Medina database, uh, Trismegistos, by Daniel Verling, uh, the Tabib, and the, the, the OIB. So a lot of, of, of things. So the top project is um, was set up, and it's an emanation actually of two workshops held in 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 Liège and in in Berlin in in um, 2015. And the idea is to compile and curate the data gathered so far for the partners of the different projects. Um, it's the way uh, uh, the aim is to extend and consolidate the content, uh, building on existing material, and. Um, very importantly, using the current best practices in thesaurus development. And of course, following the recommendation of an approach of the web, semantic web, and linked open uh, data. So, uh, what I developed is a, a Java application to create um, um, the, the concept on, in the, in the thesaurus. This is another application. It's open source. Uh, well, uh, there is no link to that, but it's open source, and of course, I would be happy to to work, or uh, so that some work could be done so that this software could be used. The fact is I try uh, other software, but I couldn't find any uh, software that was uh, matching all my, my requirements. This data is so uh, created through the software and pushed online uh, on an ExistDB database, uh, which, uh, as you know, probably uh, with XSDB, uh, uh, DB, you can put your data as XML files, and then you have on other part of the system all the things to, to have uh, a website, so a, a bootstrap website or so. Not, not very well responsive now. Uh, uh, if you try on, 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 a, on a phone, iPhone, or, or tablet, it's not very well, but it's really a question of, uh, of CSS thing. The idea is, so this um, uh, match, matches the uh, ISO standard for thesaurus. That is to say, for each concept in this thesaurus, we are giving preferred terms, alternative terms. We sh you should have also a scope note so that we are sure that we are talking about this concept and not another one. Uh, we will do references to broader uh, narrower term, you know, to have a hierarchical uh, tree. Um, and also we'll make references, cross-references to other related concepts. The idea is to be multilingual for the moment. Uh, English, French, and German are fully implemented. Arabic is planned, but we do need some help for that. Uh, I've contacted uh, some friends and colleagues uh, in, in Egypt, but it's difficult to set up something uh, easy in order to have the Arabic implemented in this in this uh, system, but for sure, this is something we wanted to we want to have uh, is to have Arabic. Another uh, pseudo language is added is uh, the XML. It's called XML uh, language. You have that here. It's not very um, clear on the screen, but we are also giving what should be used as XML value when you are. For instance, doing a TI file. As you know, if you are using a uh, value as an attribute, you can't have a comma, you can't have accent, maybe you can have space, etc. Like so we are here providing, oh, if you want to say, make a reference to this concept, please use this string of, of, of characters. Um, so we also have some specific data, for instance, uh, when it's about the thesaurus of, of periods. Uh, so you have all the kings, all the dynasties, other kings, and we are providing um, um, time uh, ranges for each uh, king. To the contrary, to Periodo, we are making uh, a statement that New Kingdom, uh, 
uh, we have a concept of new kingdom and we say in this um, for her with this reference at the back we say uh, new kingdom is from this to this time and you know Periodo is a kind of gazetteer so you will have maybe five new kingdom entries here there is only one new kingdom entry May we, in the future we'll have maybe several date um, um, range, uh, date ranges uh, because of According to scholars, it can differ, but we have only one concept: uh, new, new kingdom, or something like that. Uh, so it's in the Scots mainly, um, with some other space name entities. Like so, we are using periodo for and and also time ontology and T high. And just quickly uh, for uh, still the, um, uh, the me metadata uh, issues. We do have a very, and it recalls a, um, a talk yesterday by Osama also, this a geographical issue. Uh, we want to make a clear distinction. Um, we, as I said, we, we need to find granularity that makes possible to reference precise uh, locations. So sites, monuments, but also part of monuments and, and, and part of walls and things like that. So we need a system for that. We need also to make a clear distinction between ancient and modern uh, places. So uh, Tel El Balamun is not Payu any men. Uh, Tel El Balamun in the north of the delta is a, is a modern archaeological site. Okay, it keeps the ruins or the monuments of Payu any men with the name of the ancient town, but it's for, 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 for her, it's not the same concept. So we need something that is able to, to, to do that. Um, because ancient places have to be bound to occurrences of place names in text, this is one thing, and modern places as, uh, have to be bound to, for instance, uh, provenance or uh, a current location of, of a monument. So for that, of course, there are uh, uh, two main resources, Trismegistos place, but I believe uh, of course, I'm saying that because I, I, I am the author of the second um, resource, but I believe Trismegistos is not, uh, the model behind Trismegistos is not here, and it's not possible at current time to, to refer to uh, these correct places, as I just mentioned. The other project is, is a top bib, the topographical bibliography, which is a di digital version of a eight volumes uh, book, uh, which is mainly, which is basically a description of Egypt uh, with bibliographical reference. So if you want to know something about the Temple of Hedfu, you go, you open the volume six, uh, the page of, about Hedfu, you know that there is a first court. Uh, in this first court, you have this wall, on this wall, you have this kind of scene, and you can have information in this book published in 1933. So, the Digital Tabib is an online version of that. There is more than 5,000 pages to be um, uh, digitized. And the idea is to provide URIs for all modern sites. And so in the uh, near future, hopefully, uh, to the content of the site. So to the sub-site uh, sub monuments, artifacts, part of monuments, and, and so forth. So here you have uh, an idea of the new version. The, so this Telfahaun is a site. Below, at the bottom of the page, you have the old print version. And at the top, the, how it looks like um, uh, now. You can have a look also directly on the web. The idea is, with a top lib number, you can refer specifically to, to, to a part of a, so to a site. You have tonight Gable 49030. You can also refer to a specific uh, part of the site. So the number will be a bit longer. and and so forth, uh, even up to the monument in, um, in a site. To finish, very quickly, what we uh, think also, which is very important for us, is to have clear data model uh, that are the, back, the backbone of what we are, we are doing. And so um, I think our, it's mainly Stefan, maybe, uh, because I was not involved with uh, Yale at the time, but started to, to work on that uh, in 2006. And um, to first 
um, for the Ramses project to, to, to define a generic data model that will be able to um, encapsulate or um, all the data uh, he was dealing with. This was expanded more uh, recently. We published at the end of last year this data model, which tries to so to say how where kind of information can be put. It's an abstract view of that. It's not an implementation, but we are saying that we have those these classes. Um, so an object, the document, the witness, and the text, and all this goes into this uh, this system. I will not go into detail because I'm running out of time. But what I wanted to say is this is a basic uh, data model we published recently uh, in December. Um, very, even before it was published, an extension was made about text content. So here, basically, um, how uh, can we uh, use this model in order to to model inter intertextual uh, relationships between text, the content of text, and how you split the, the question of content and uh, abstract content and, and physical content. And then uh, something I presented uh, in January here in Leipzig, uh, an extension uh, about places and how uh, places can be bound between a place name that is uh, uh, mentioned in a, in a text, in, in a witness, and places um, uh, inferred by the location uh, of the document or of the, uh, the provenance of, of, of the, the document. So all this data model is really in, in the perspective of enabling a, a fully um, interoperable um, 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 system where all these projects that are doing stuff in separate uh, ways can then bring all, all together and in order to, to um, bring all together and, and talk uh, to, 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 each, to each other. And I think, yeah, it's, it's finished. Thank you very much for your attention.